Well, hey everyone, welcome to CF Online. My name is Omi. My name is Ray. Hey, and if it's your first time with us, we would love to connect with you. Just text CF Miami to 313131. Pastor Ray, Christmas is here. All these traditions are rolling by and in our household, we like to listen to Christmas music all year long and put the Christmas tree up before Thanksgiving, like that week before. Wow, that's pretty unique. You know, for us, we do it the day after Thanksgiving. The trees goes up, the lights go up, the shopping starts, but of course in 2020, anything goes. So we did it all early. But for us, the big tradition, Christmas jammies. We wear Christmas jammies the day of at Christmas, take funny photos together and have fun with it. What's your Christmas tradition? We wanna know. Go ahead and tell us in the chat right now. As we're celebrating all across our campuses and right here online, I wanna invite you to join us in worship. Let's sing to our Savior. Oh, we look to the sun, set our eyes on our Savior, see the image of love, sing His praises forever. Tearing through the dead of night See the kingdom burst into color at the speed of light Freedom shaking up the atmosphere As the shadows fade, as the nothing, as the day appears Come on, we sing beyond the skies Beyond the skies above, love reaching out for us, the everlasting one, Jesus our God. Oh, we look to the sun, set our eyes on our Savior, see the image of love, sing His praises forever. Waking up to kingdom come See the hope of heaven Shining like the rising sun Whoa. And now forever Lifted up from death to life There's no fear in love And no darkness in his endless light We say Beyond the skies above Love reaching out for us The everlasting one Jesus our God Oh, we look to the sun Set our eyes on our Savior See the image of love Sing His praises forever
Forever to the King of Kings. 
its breath Till that storm is smooth for good For the Lamb it conquered death Come on! And the dead rose from their tombs And the angels stood in Our Jesus, that fulfilled the prophets and the law, traded the throne for a cradle. Emmanuel, God is with us. If there's one sure thing this Christmas season, is that God is always with us. Welcome back to CF Online. If this is your first time, please text CF Miami to 313131 right now. And also we wanna invite you to give here at Christ Fellowship. When you give, you're making an impact both here in Miami-Dade County, but also around the world. It doesn't matter if it's through our local campuses or through CF Online, your giving makes an impact that is reaching people for Jesus all over the planet. And so for those of you who have give, we wanna say thank you. But if you have yet to become a recurring giver, I wanna go ahead and challenge you and invite you today to start. So go ahead and text CF Give right now to 313131. Right now, Pastor Omar has a special message on our Christmas offering. Let's take a look. Hey, Christ Fellowship family, it's Pastor Omar and my beautiful wife, Ashley, and it's an, it is Christmas time. And this season is an important time to give. You know, throughout the year, we've experienced so much of the generosity of God towards us in countless ways. Things like our families, our health, food, shelter. So therefore, when we reflect on God's generosity towards us, the natural response is for us to be generous as well. And one of the ways that we're doing that this year is through our special Christmas offering. Now, this Christmas offering is different from your regular giving. The Christmas offering is something that you give above and beyond what you normally give towards a special cause. And this year, the cause that we're focusing on is Caring for Miami. In fact, Ashley, could you share a little with our church family a little bit about Caring for Miami? Absolutely. Well, Caring for Miami is the nonprofit extension of Christ Fellowship. And their mission is to care for families in need by serving their physical, spiritual, and emotional needs. At Caring for Miami, we have three unique programs. First, the Project Smile program, which provides free dental care to those in need on board a mobile dental unit. The Bridge Program helps immigrant families advance their English speaking skills to better navigate everyday life. And finally, the Backpack Program, which feeds hungry, food insecure children right here in our city every weekend. And this year, our Christmas offering will go directly towards Caring for Miami's Backpack Program. You know, the Backpack Program began years back when one of the schools that we were partnering with shared with us a heartbreaking story. It turns, it turns out that on a Friday afternoon, there were some kids in a classroom signaling to the teacher that one of the boys smelled. And so when the teacher came to that boy, she opened up his book bag, and it turns out that he had taken all the leftover food from the lunchroom because he wouldn't eat until he got back to school the following Monday. Now, when we heard this, listen, our hearts broke. And the backpack program was born for children just like that little boy. And for the past seven years, we have provided a bag full of food that ensures children are fed until they come back on Monday. Now, our Christmas offering goal this year is to raise enough to serve at least 750 of these children. Well, inside each weekend bag, Caring for Miami provides two breakfasts, two lunch, two dinners, and two snacks. And this coming year, we'll be including vegetable and fruit options 
plus whole milk. It takes about $25 to feed a child for one entire month, which means that for $225, you can feed a child for the entire school year. So here's some options for you. $25 feeds a child for a month, $50 feeds a child for two months, $75 for three months, $125 feeds a child for half a school year, and then, like I said earlier, $225 feeds a child for the entire school year. However, listen, any gift, any amount is greatly appreciated because your support makes it all happen. And you can give by visiting cfmommy.org slash offering and there you will be able to give towards it. Now, keep in mind that 100% of what you give will go directly to these children. So thank you again for considering giving towards such a special cause this Christmas season. You are putting warm meals in the bellies of those little ones whose families lack basic resources for food. Your support ensures Caring for Miami can continue to work to improve and impact lives one tummy at a time. As we reflect on the Lord's generosity towards us, we hope you're inspired to give above and beyond this Christmas season. All right, Christ Fellowship, we hope you have a Merry Christmas season. So let's go ahead and stand up together and continue to worship. Church, like Pastor Omar said, let's go ahead and stand and continue to worship. As we sing this next song that talks about our God, being a counselor, mighty God, everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace for all eternity. That's the God that we serve. So let's sing that together. Oh, can you hear the angel song that rang so sweet and clear? When heaven's light and music fell and mercy found us here. Glory in the highest, and on the earth be peace Glory to God the angels sing oh. Can we sing his name? His name shall be called wonderful Counselor Peace. 
Almighty God, Everlasting Father. Well, my name is Carlos and I serve as one of the teaching pastors here at Christ Fellowship. And I want to take a moment and welcome all of our local campuses, West Kendall, uh, Doral, Core Gables, Downtown, Redland, Home, Homestead, and everyone who is watching us online. Palmetto Bay, can we give it up for them as loud as you can? Yep. Well, we are in the middle of our Christmas series and last weekend, uh, Pastor Omar brought an amazing message. Let's give it up for our lead, lead pastor in case you didn't, didn't watch it. And we were looking at the Christmas story from the side, from the lens of Joseph. And so this weekend, we're going to look, look at it through the lens of Mary. So if you have your Bibles, uh, you can open them up to Luke chapter 1, verse 28. If you don't have your Bibles, all the verses will, will come up on the screen. Here's what the Word of God said. And he came to her and said, Greetings, O favored one. Say it with me, favored. Say it like you mean it, favored. Favored one. The Lord is with you. But Mary, she was greatly troubled at the saying and tried to discern what sort of greeting this might be. And the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found what? favor with God and behold you will conceive in your womb and bear a son and you shall call his name Jesus amen well you can have a seat now at all of our campuses you know one of the things that I love about the Christmas season are all the different Christmas traditions the moment that Thanksgiving ends I love listening to Christmas music I love watching all the different Christmas movies like Home Alone and Polar Express and Elf. Uh, I love all the food and the festivities. And I know that this year is going to be different because of COVID, but I just love all of the traditions. Now, my amazing, beautiful wife, Shawnee, there is a Christmas tradition that she absolutely loves. She loves to receive Christmas cards from family and friends. How many of you like that? Yeah, raise your hand, make some noise. Yeah, we started receiving some of our Christmas cards already. And the first one that I received was from Pastor Ray, our online campus pastor. Can we give it up for Pastor Ray and his beautiful family? He is that overachiever that sends out his cards way before everyone else. I got his card right after Thanksgiving on Black Friday. So Pastor Ray, you are the man. So last year, my wife wanted to get our Christmas cards ahead from everyone else. And so we didn't take Christmas pictures, but instead we took pictures in the fall season and we used those same pictures to use as Christmas cards. So she went online and set it all up and then she did everything that she had to do. And then later on, a couple days later, she received an email that our Christmas cards were delayed. Now, we did it early on so that people would receive it way before Christmas, but now our Christmas cards are delayed. A week later, my wife would receive another email, and guess what it said? The Christmas cards are delayed. Well, long story short, we didn't receive our Christmas cards till like about two days before Noche Buena, Christmas Eve. All that trouble, and I am sending Christmas cards in January. I got people texting me on the new year, hey, bro, I just got your Christmas card and it's January, but Merry Christmas to you as well. All of that trouble. So this year came around and my wife said, are you ready for the Christmas cards to take pictures? And I was like, sweetie, my love, I don't want to go through all that trouble just like we did last year to receive Christmas cards two days before Christmas Eve. But my wife reminded me that the company that we dealt with last year showed us favor and they gave us a $200 credit to use this year. All of a sudden, all oh, my perspective about the Christmas cards completely changed. I was like, my love, where are we taking the Christmas pictures? What are we going to put on? What shoes should my kids wear? What outfit does Everly put on? And I was all excited about the Christmas cards because I was reminded of that favor and that $200 credit. So we took our Christmas pictures. In fact, here it is. And uh, I've been worried. I'm like, when are we going to receive them? When are we going to receive them? And we actually received them yesterday by the grace of God. Thank God. But church family, don't miss the point in the story. 
You see, because the moment that Shawnee, my wife, reminded me of the favor that that company showed us, my perspective about the Christmas cards completely changed. Now, let me bring all of that over to our teaching for today. Because what an image of the Christmas story. And by that, I mean, when we are reminded of God's favor and how he showed us his favor through Jesus Christ, our perspective of life completely changes. In fact, with that in mind, this is our big idea for today. The Christmas story is God's display of his favor over us. Now, you might be thinking, Pastor Carlos, what exactly does God's favor even mean? And how do I receive God's favor? Because maybe you're thinking, I don't feel favored. This year has been the most difficult year for many of us. And perhaps you're watching us online or maybe you're at the West Kendall campus and maybe you lost your job throughout this COVID season. Or perhaps this has been the most difficult year for your marriage Or perhaps you are struggling to pay your bills, you're struggling to pay your mortgage, and you're thinking, Pastor Carlos, how can I experience God's favor in the midst of everything that's going on? Well, we're going to find out today as we go through this passage, this narrative in Luke chapter 1. And so if you have your Christ Fellowship app, I want you to take it out. We love to take notes here if you're watching us online as well, if you're at our West Kendall campus. Here's the first point that I want you to put on your phone today. The Christmas story is God's ultimate display of God's favor. The Christmas story is the ultimate display of God's favor. Now let's go back to the narrative in Luke chapter 1. Because here's what the word of God says. The angel, and he came to her and said, Greetings, O favored one. The Lord is with you. But Mary, she was greatly troubled at the saying and tried to discern what sort of greeting this might be. Now, let me give us some context to set up the narrative, the teaching for today. Because whenever the angel of the Lord appears to Mary, it is in a very dark and difficult season in Jewish history. In fact, for many of you, many of you perhaps may not know this, but for over 500 years, the Jews had been under the oppression of many forms and different types of governments. With that in mind, in 550 BC, around 550 BC, Cyrus the Great started the Persian Empire and it conquered the Babylonians and it conquered the Jews. And so the Jews were under the Persian Empire. And then around 330 BC, Alexander the Great started the Hellenistic Empire. And so the Jews had to learn the Greek culture. They had to learn the language and worship these pagan gods. Little by little, that government, that empire started to dissolve. And then around 27 BC, Caesar Augustus began the Roman Empire. And in this time, when the angel of the Lord appears to Mary, the Jews were under the control of the Roman Empire. So they had gone through so many different types of totalitarian types of governments, 500 years of oppression, and to make matters worse, God had not spoken for over 400 years. The book of Malachi in the Old Testament was the last book in the Old Testament written by God. And so God had not spoken for over 400 years. And with all that in mind, the angel of the Lord appears to Mary. So Mary had not heard from God for many, many years. And so here's what the angel of the Lord says to her. You will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you shall call his name Jesus. Now Mary asked the following to the angel. How will this be since I am a virgin? And the angel answered her. The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child to be born will be called Holy, the Son of God. Now, amen. Yeah, you can clap it up for that. Now, let's think for a moment, because oftentimes when we think of this scene, what conjures in our mind is this idea of the angel Mary being a teenage girl 
But let's think how Mary felt. Let's look at the narrative through her lens. Bible scholars believe that Mary was about 14 years old, maybe 15 years old. Mary is a virgin. She had not been intimate with Joseph. And all of a sudden, the angel of the Lord, God has not spoken in over 400 years, tells Mary, you're going to have a baby. And the baby, the dad of the baby, is God. Put yourself in her shoes. How am I going to explain this to Joseph? Hey, Joey. Hey, my love. Hey, sweetie. By the way, I'm pregnant. No, no, no. It, it, it's, it's, we know it's not your baby. It's God's baby. Think of the emotions and the feelings that she must have been experiencing in that very moment. How much was at stake? Her relationship with Joseph, her relationship with her family, her relationship with her friends was at stake. Her reputation was at stake because in that culture, when a young girl got pregnant outside of marriage, it was something embarrassing. It was something shameful. Not only was her relationships at stake, not only was her reputation at stake, but also her life was at stake. According to Jewish law, if a woman had committed adultery, they would be stoned. So all of this is happening, and the angel of the Lord says, Mary, you have found favor with God. That doesn't feel like favored. It feels like a very difficult, hard situation. Here's what I want all of us to get today. We can experience favor. Write this down as your next point. Favor can be experienced in unfavorable situations. In unfavorable situations. Because when we think of the word favor from God, we think of a trouble-free life. For example, we drive to Target, and there are four different Targets on US-1. So you choose one. And it is filled with people, not one parking spot, but all of a sudden, the parking spot next to the handicap becomes available, and it's all yours. And you're like, yes, God's favor is over my life. Oh, you've been working hard at work, and you come home, and your husband is preparing a good meal, washing the dishes, folding the clothes. Your children are doing their homework. Your teenage daughter is listening to everything you're saying. Yes, God's favor is over my life. Oh, you've been single for many, many years, and you have been praying to God to bring you that guy. And you go to church, and that guy is sitting right next to you, worshiping God with all enthusiasm and energy and expression. And then you go to college group afterwards, and you go to small group, and that guy is sitting next to you. And then you break off into groups, and that guy is talking to you. And then the next morning, you check your Instagram, and that guy is DMing you, favor of God. Yes, God will allow favorable moments in our lives. But the favor that God is talking about here in Luke chapter 1 and that he talks about in the New Testament is much greater than that. You see, because that type of favor depends on a situation. That type of favor depends on a moment. But the favor that God wants you to experience depends on a person. And that person is Jesus Christ, God Almighty, the name above all names who came down to rescue you from your sins and it completely changes your perspective and so what exactly does the word favor even mean let's go back to luke chapter 1 verse 28 because in two verses 28 and 30 god says greetings oh favored one say with me favored Favorite. say it like you mean it at west kendall and watching online favored Favorite. favored one the lord is with you and then he says the angel said to her do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. Now, if you're taking notes, I want you to circle or underline that word favor. We've told you many times that the New Testament was first written in Greek and then translated into other languages. That word favor in the New Testament in Greek is the word haras. And it means grace. 
It means grace. In fact, it appears in the New Testament 150 different times. It means grace. It means undeserving, unqualifying, receiving something that you do not deserve. In fact, in fact, when the angel of the Lord appears to Mary, he says, oh, favored one. He doesn't say, oh, Mary, oh, righteous one. Oh, Mary, oh, sanctified one. Oh, Mary, oh, holy one. Oh, Mary, oh, obedient one. Now, I'm not taking away from Mary's obedience because she trusted in God and she was a young girl who was devoted to the things of God. But what? God said, Mary, you have found favor and there is nothing you can do to earn this favor. It is the gift of God. In fact, write this down as your next point. There is nothing that you and I can do to earn God's favor. And we see that pattern all throughout scripture from Genesis to Revelation. In fact, if we go to Genesis chapter 6, verse 5 in the narrative of Noah, look at what the Bible says. The Lord saw the wickedness of man was great in the earth and that every, say with me, every, say it like you mean it, every, every intention of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. Everyone was evil and wicked. And the Lord regretted that he had made man on the earth and it grieved him to his heart. But Noah found what? Favor Favor in the eyes of the Lord. The first time the word grace comes out in the Bible is in Genesis chapter six. Everyone was evil. Everyone was doing wicked things. But God said, you know what? I am going to choose Noah, and Noah, you and your family, you have found favor. You have found grace with me. And in Genesis chapter 16, Genesis chapter 18, verse 3, with Abraham, God said, Abraham says, Oh, Lord, if I have found favor in your sight, do not pass by your servant. God was with Abraham in every journey. In Exodus chapter 33, with Moses The Lord said to Moses, this very thing that you have spoken, I will do for you, have found what? Have found what? Favor in my sight. In Judges chapter 6 with Gideon, look at what the Bible says. If now I have found favor in your eyes, this is Gideon speaking to God, then show me a sign that is you who speak with me. Ezra. Ruth, Nehemiah, Daniel, all these men, women of God, they found favor with God. And there is nothing they did to deserve it. When you are a child of God, when you are a son of God, it's because you have found favor. You have found grace with God. And there is nothing that you can do to deserve it. And that moment that you place your trust, that you place your hope, and you repent from your sins, at that moment, you are rich in favor. Rich in favor. A couple of weeks ago, my son Nathan, my middle child, two of his teeth had fallen off. And so he tells me, Papi, 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 when is the tooth fairy coming? Don't judge me. He watched the movie. Don't send me an email. Eventually, I'll let him know that I'm the tooth fairy. And so I put $2 underneath his pillow, and he wakes up that next morning, and he tells his siblings, Noah and Everly, he says, I am rich. I am rich. He gets his little treasure box, and he has $3, and now he has two, so now he has $5 and a couple coins. And he says, I am rich. I have $5. Little does he know that $5 won't even get him a salad at McDonald's now. Your boy is trying to eat healthy. Or a number one. How much is a number one? Come on. Don't act like you don't go there. Big Mac is what, 6 39 if you make it a big size or large, even more expensive. But for my little five-year-old, $5 was more than enough. And he felt rich. Can I tell you something? When you have found the favor of God and you are his child, you are rich. No matter what you're going through in life, 
you are rich because you can experience God's favor in unfavorable moments. Even when you are weak, God's favor gives you strength. When you are sick, God's favor gives you peace. When you are not sure of the future, God's favor gives you certainty. When you don't know what to do next with your life, God's favor gives you wisdom and guidance. That is the God that you and I serve. And because of Christmas, we can experience God's favor. And so favor is something that we did not earn. And it is a gift of God through Jesus Christ. And once you experience and remind yourself yourself of the favor of God, I want you to write this down because it's so important. God's favor leads to trust. God's favor leads to trust. Let's go back to the narrative in Luke chapter 1, verse 29. Luke chapter 1, verse 29. I think you have it in my Bible. Luke chapter 1, verse 29. Look at what the narrative says. Look at what the narrative says. She was greatly troubled at the saying as he tried to discern what sort of greeting this might be. And the angel said to her, do not be afraid. So the moment that the angel appears to Mary, she was filled with fear. But here's what I love. Because in that same chapter, in verse 46, look at how Mary responds once the angel delivers the promise of God. And Mary said, my soul magnifies the Lord and my spirit rejoices in God. My what? Savior. Mary acknowledged her need of saving. For he has looked down on the humble estate of his servant. For behold, from now on, all generations will call me blessed. For he who is mighty has done great things for me. And holy is his name, and his mercy is for those who fear him from generation to generation. At that moment, Mary went from being filled with fear to worship. Why? Because she found the favor of God. Yes, you can clap it up for that. Today, she found the favor of God. You know, perhaps you're thinking, Pastor Carlos, Listen, I I get where you're coming from, but, you know, I have some needs in this life. You know, the Christmas season is that time of the year that we start thinking of the things that we don't have. And maybe you're thinking, Carlos, Pastor Carlos, I get where you're coming from about the favor of God and God has forgiven me of my sins and all that, but I need to buy a home or I need a job Oh, I need to finish grad school. Oh, I need to finish, I need to find a boyfriend. Or or I need physical healing. Does God not care about my needs? And the answer is, of course, God cares about every single one of your needs, whether small or large. And the Bible says that he will never leave you nor forsake you. The word of God says in 2 Corinthians chapter 1 that he is the God of all comfort. But I want to remind every single one of us today in this Christmas season. You see, if your greatest need in life was a financial need, God would have sent a banker. If your greatest need in life was a health need, God would have sent a physician, a doctor. If your greatest need in life was a boyfriend, God would have sent a bachelor or a girlfriend, a bachelorette. If your greatest need was a social need, God would have sent a philanthropist. If your greatest need was entertainment, God would have sent a comedian. But our greatest need in life is the forgiveness of our sins, which is why God sent his son, the Savior, to come down over 2,000 years to live a perfect life, and to die on the cross for our sins. I love the trust that Mary had. Because look at what the Word of God says. She says, Mary says, my God, my Savior. Now, think about this for a moment. Because Jesus had not been born yet. Jesus had not stepped foot on this earth yet. Jesus had not chosen his 12 disciples yet. 
Jesus had not performed his first miracle of turning water into wine yet. Jesus had not been arrested to go to the cross yet. He had not been crucified. He had not resurrected from the grave yet. He had not appeared to over 300 people before he ascended back into heaven. And yet, Mary says, my God, my Savior, wait a minute. It hasn't happened. But Mary was like, you know what? My type of trust, my type of faith, if God said it's going to happen, you can put it in the bank. It will happen. And I know that God is going to come through, which is why the word of God says in Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6, without faith, it is impossible to please God. That word faith in the Greek is the word pestuo, which means to trust, to trust him. Without trusting God, it is impossible to please God. So the first thing that the favor of God reminds you of, it changes your perspective by you trusting in God. Here's the next point, and it comes out from this narrative. It leads you to obedience. It leads you to obedience. Look at what the Word of God says in Luke chapter 1, verse 38. When the angel of the Lord came to her, Mary said, Behold, I am what? The servant. Say with me, servant. Servant of the Lord. Let it be to me according to your word. In other words, God, you're giving me, you're telling me what to do, and I am just going to obey you. You know, there's a little story in Luke chapter 11 where Jesus encounters a woman, and he starts talking about Mary, and he says, as Jesus was saying these things, a woman in the crowd called out, called out, blessed is the mother who gave you birth and nursed you. And look at what Jesus says. He replied, blessed rather are those who hear the word of God and what? And obey it. You see, true favor doesn't stay just still in your hearts. True favor from God always leads to obedience. God, I want to do your will. God, I want to follow your ways. God, I want to submit my life to whatever you have for me, whatever you have called upon me. We're not saved by good works, but rather we are saved for good works. So the favor of God always leads to obedience. And that is how Mary responded. God had given her the promise, given her the orders that she went ahead and obeyed God. And here's the last point that I want you to write this down today. The favor of God leads to hope. The favor of God leads to hope. Look at what the word of God says when the angel of the Lord appears to Mary Luke chapter 1, verse 32, he will be great, the angel is telling Mary, and will be called the Son of the Most High, and the Lord God will give to him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. You know, it's amazing when the angel of the Lord appears to Mary. Not only does he make an announcement of the birth of Jesus. Hey, Mary, this is what's going to happen. You're going to carry God's son. You have found favor with God. But he also makes the announcement of what God is going to do in the second coming. In other words, God, Jesus, will come down and will restore all things. Create a new heaven. Create a new earth. We'll make all things new. Amen. How many of you believe that today? Can we give Jesus a shout of praise? You know, a friend of mine was ta- told me a story that I want to share. He told me a story of this elderly lady that was devoted to God and devoted to the church. She served the church for many, many years. And she was already, she knew that her time was going to pass. And she was ready, excited to be in the presence of God. And so before she passed away, She asked to meet with the pastor who was going to do the funeral. And she said, pastor, 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 you know, when you do my funeral, I'm ready to be with God. I want you to play these songs, these hymns. I want you to preach the gospel message, do an invitation like you always do. But then there's something unique that I want you to do in my funeral. 
I want the casket to be open and I want you to place a fork in my hands. I want you to place a fork in my hand. At that moment, the pastor was like, oh, is she going through dementia? Is she losing it? You know, probably something's wrong with her medically. She's about to pass away. She said, man, why, why do you want a fork in your hand as you're being buried? Well, it's easy. You know, in my years of being in ministry and serving God, every time I went to a Christmas dinner, a potluck dinner, a gathering, once I finished a meal of food, I would go and throw it away. And there was always this one person and would tell me, uh, uh, oh, hold on to the fork. Hold on to the fork because the best is still to come. Hold on to the fork because the best is still to come. I knew I had just enjoyed some ham, some pork, mac and cheese, mashed potato, rice, but I knew that there was something better waiting for me. Cheesecake, tres leches, flan, chocolate cake, apple pie. I knew there was something better for me. So I want to give a message to everyone on my funeral that even though I am passing away from this earth, the best is still to come because I have the favor of God. And so God promises a new heaven and a new earth. In fact, the word of God says in Revelation 21, 4, he, meaning Jesus himself, will wipe every tear from their eyes. Not Mary, not Joseph, not Moses, not Abraham, not the Apostle Paul, not John and James, but Jesus Christ, the Savior, will wipe every tear from you. Every tear that you have shed, every tear that you've shed. And look at what the Word of God says. There will be no more death or mourning or crying or pain. No more cancer. No more hospitals. No more COVID. No need for a vaccine. No more evictions. No more bankruptcy. No more racism. No more depression. No more anxiety. No more struggles. No more discouragement. Because the best is still to come when you have the favor of God. Oh, it doesn't matter what's happening. It doesn't matter how unfavorable your situation is. The best is still to come when you have Jesus in your life and it changes everything it changes your perspective so even if your situation is unfavorable if you have God's favor you can still experience hope if you trust and obey God amen I want to ask everyone to bow your head and to close your eyes if you're watching us online or maybe you're at one of our campuses. Father God, we just come before you and we recognize, Lord, that we are in need of your love and your mercy, of your grace, of your favor, Lord. God, thank you for reminding us through the narrative of Mary, Lord. God, that if we are your children, we have found favor with God. And there is nothing we can do to earn it. And there is nothing we can do to lose that favor that you deposit on your children. But as every head is bowed and every eye is closed, maybe you're joining us for the first time and you're like, Pastor Carlos, you're talking about the favor of God, but I have never experienced Jesus in my life. I'm so far away from God and maybe you're watching us online or maybe you're at our West Kendall campus and you're like, I am so far away from God. I have messed up so many times in my life. I want to remind you, my friend, today, God's hand is never too short to heal and to save you. And today he wants to save you and forgive you from all your sins. The Bible says that we are all sinners. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ. And today, not tomorrow, not next week, but today you have an opportunity to make a decision to follow Jesus. Here's what I want you to do. 
I'm going to lead us in a prayer in a moment. It's not the prayer that saves you, but rather the condition of your heart, and God wants your heart. And if you're making that decision today, as every eye is closed and every head is bowed, and you're like, Pastor Carlos, I need God's favor with no one looking, would you take a moment right now and just lift up your hand as high as you can with no one looking? God bless you, sir. I see your hand. God bless you in the back. God bless you. God bless you, sir. God bless you, ma'am. God bless you. You can put your hand down. God bless you, ma'am. God's favor is now over your life if you truly give your life to Jesus. God bless you. God bless you. I'm going to lead us in a prayer right now. It's not the prayer that saves you, but rather the condition of your heart. You can pray something similar, or you can pray the same exact words that I say. Father God, I recognize that I am a sinner in need of saving. Jesus, I believe that you died, you were buried, and you were raised from the grave for my sins. God, I accept your favor. I accept your grace, the free gift of salvation through Jesus. And today I repent for my sins and I run to you. Write my name in the book of life. Be my Lord, be my Savior, be my everything. It's in Jesus' name that I pray. Amen and amen. Christ Fellowship, if you're excited for those that said that prayer, West Kendall Campus, Doral, Homestead, Redland, Coral Gables. Here's what I want you to do. I want you to text the word CF Miami all together. There's going to be a lower third right now. CF Miami all together to the number 313131. Make sure you text that. We want to give you some free stuff. We want to pray for you. We want to welcome you to God's family. So make sure you text CF Miami to 31 31 31. Well, Christ Fellowship, if I don't see you, Merry Christmas and have a happy new year. God bless you. Take care. I want to invite all the campus pastors forward now. I love you, Christ Fellowship. What a powerful message from Pastor Carlos. If you decided to give your life to Jesus today, I want to invite you to text CF Miami to 313131 right now so that we can help you take your next step. Thanks for joining us on CF Online. We'll see you next week.